Hi, Coffee Breaks with Steve fans, and welcome. If this is your first time here, I'd like to welcome you to our channel. If you're coming back, welcome back. Would ask you to do me a big favor and hit that subscribe button as well as the like button. That helps us make sure that our videos are getting out to more people and the information that we present and the guests that we invite on the show are being made visible to even more people who can enjoy the experience. If you're tuning in today, this video is an extended version of an episode that was live streamed on the Coffee Breaks with Steve Facebook Live and YouTube Live. And the links to actually go in and see the original live stream show, which is recorded for later viewing, will be in the description below. In the meantime, we did abbreviate the live stream for time. And so I'm presenting the entire presentation here for the purposes of making sure that everybody gets the whole thing if they want it. So I'll just tell you up front, that this is a presentation talking about how often should we be doing things that are common in everyday life? The things we clean and wash, the things we maintain, the things we replace. Doesn't cover absolutely everything. That would take forever. And I certainly am not presenting myself as an expert in any of these areas. This is information that was researched online. It's being presented here for educational purposes only. We'll have disclaimers up stating that and restating that. And I'll probably mention it a few times uh, during the course of talking about this. But I did want to share the information with you and give you the opportunity to see some of these interesting and I think helpful ideas. And remember, all of this is just guideline. You can do with this whatever you want. This is not to imply this is the only way to approach the, the washing, cleaning, maintaining, replacement, tossing away of any items or of any things that you do in daily life. So I'm going to just get right to it right now and uh, talk a little bit about how often should you maintain, clean, replace things that you use and things that you do in daily life. So a little bit about uh, this, first of all, again, I'm just putting up the disclaimer to remind you that this is for educational and informational purposes, and uh, I am not an expert, and it shouldn't be represented in any way as, as being professional or expert advice. It's just some things that are available through some resources online. Do with it what you want to. So how often should we take care of personal hygiene? Personal hygiene is one of those things that uh, you know involves a variety of, of things that we do in terms of maintaining our own selves. And just a few items here that I think are worth taking a look at. For instance, showering and shampooing. I remember growing up, it was kind of like we showered, especially once I reach a certain age where the hormones were kicking in. Shower every day, shower every morning before you go to school or shower every evening or whatever. And the bottom line with this is that the, the experts and the professionals, people in the medical profession and others will say there's not any one size fits all. It depends on your body. It depends on your activity level. But they say that the daily showers may be an OK thing, but it's not always necessary. And in fact, it can lead to some additional skin issues and stuff. So, again, depends on you, depends on what your needs are. But they say that for many people. A couple of times a week, maybe two to three times a week is sufficient, may even be better for, in terms of maintaining your health. Because one of the things that our skin actually needs is to have some good bacteria on there, both to build up our immunities, but also to fight some of the other things that could be harmful to us. And if we shower too frequently, we wash away those good bacteria before they have an opportunity to do their work. So again, a guideline. I would say that people with certain allergies, uh, with special conditions may have to shower more frequently. And again, consult your physician, consult your, your medical experts if you have any questions about this. They also say the length of the showers doesn't have to be long. Some of us like to get in the shower and get that hot water going and take a marathon shower. And then, and it's a properly, the time needed is to properly get yourself washed sufficiently. The other thing is that they also say that washing with temperatures that are too hot in the shower can be detrimental. Um, same thing with washing your hair. You don't need to do it every single day, again, depending on the conditions of your hair, your scalp and other things. But they also recommend that for many people, shampooing two or three times a week or three or four times a week may be sufficient. Up to you. 
up to what you think is going to be best for you. But if you notice issues occurring, maybe you revisit that. All right, a little bit about showering and, and shampooing. What about dental care? Well, this is a biggie. A lot of us don't like to go to the dentist and contrary wise, some of us don't do the proper things in between those dental visits to really take care of our teeth and, and gums and the inside of our mouth. They say that the American Dental Association from the American Dental Association recommends brushing teeth for at least two minutes twice a day, once before breakfast and once before bed. The interesting thing about that first one, I think I was always taught, you know, get up in the morning, eat breakfast, brush your teeth before you head out the door to school or work. For one thing, it kind of got rid of breakfast breath, but there are reasons why they actually recommend you do that because you're, you're before breakfast and even before if you're a coffee drinker like I am, they say before you do that first cup of coffee, pour that first cup of coffee and drink it because of the bacteria and residue that forms on your teeth overnight while you're sleeping, that brushing your teeth first thing in the morning before you eat or, or consume anything actually prevents uh, or can help prevent having things glom onto your teeth and, and add further uh, issues. Um, you know, for, I mean, for that matter, who's to say you can only brush twice a day, brush before breakfast, brush after breakfast. I remember growing up hearing brush after every meal. So these are guidelines. Flossing at least once a day. I actually carry floss in my pocket because I get stuff stuck between my teeth sometimes just during the day. And I may or may not be near the floss in the bathroom in my, in my caddy. And then they say schedule a dental checkup at least once a year or as recommended by your dentist. So guidelines, direction. I think it's especially important to start teaching kids and working with kids to set these habits early on so that they can maintain that and they can avoid issues potentially later in life. Washing hands. Boy, we talked about this. This was covered so much as we went into the COVID pandemic and hand washing was focused on. And the reality is, why did we need a pandemic to talk about the basics of one of the most important and easiest areas of hygiene to prevent illness and the spreading of germs? And uh, th this, the guidelines here, I'm not going to go through these bullet points. I'm going to leave them up here for a minute. But we've heard all of this. We covered all of this for three years straight. And I'll tell you a couple of things. One thing that I noticed even in the, in the height of the pandemic is that I'd be in a public washroom someplace, men's room. And I would watch men take care of their restroom needs and then walk out of the bathroom without using the sink at all, let alone whether they were sufficiently washing, soaping, rinsing, et cetera, for the, the amount of time and, and in the ways that are uh, recommended. And I don't think it's on here, but one of the things you may recall from the pandemic is they said a minimum of 20 seconds in order to break down some of the uh, germs that might be actually present on your hands. So, and there are other things around hand washing to make it as thorough as possible that aren't on here. Oh, laundry. This one, this is part of what prompted me to even put this presentation together is an article I read a while back about how misguided we are on doing laundry. And this information is actually from um, I, good housekeeping, good housekeeping magazine people. And so I'm just putting their slide up here because I think it speaks so well. I want to give credit where credit's due for the information that I'm putting together here. They are more expert than I am. And once again, they're providing information and guidelines, but it's interesting because they, there's differences. Sometimes we, we wear something one time, we throw it in the laundry basket and we wash it. And that can actually um, wear down certain fabrics faster and, and make them, you know, we have to get rid of it and replace it faster than we should need to. And uh, this gives some guidelines here that I think are helpful. Certain things, yes, every time you wear them, you should, um, you should wash them. And I was looking to see, let's see, is underwear on here? We're going to talk about underwear, I think, separately. But tights, shirts, blouses uh, should be every time you wear them. Basically, so should underwear and socks. And uh, I don't think that's mentioned anywhere, anywhere here. But uh, every day, this one was interesting to me because I know we don't currently do this and I'm just being transparent here, but dish towels, hand towels, washcloths, the end of every day, you should take those off, throw them in to get washed and put a fresh set up there. And again, because of the things they touch and the way they're used and the germs that can gather on those, every three wears, some things up here like um so every every third time for instance that you do take that shower 
then that's when the, the towels that you use should go in the wash. I thought that uh, this one for ladies, I thought was interesting. And you may already have known this, but bras and slips. You know, I would have just included that with sort of underwear and socks and said it every time. But a uh, number of these things, every three wears, and then once a week, and I'll tell you this as well, I, uh, we are probably not as frequent in stripping the bed and washing the sheets as we need to. I don't think, we, I don't think we're uh, doing a bad job of it, but we're not doing it every week. And part of that is just, I have to admit, it's kind of the hassle of stripping the bed and, and then remaking the bed is a bit of a chore as I get older. Um, every month, bathrobes, mattress, pa mattress pads, it's another one that's underneath there because these are ways they say you can avoid having things like bed bugs, but also just bacteria and other germs that gather. Pillow liners, every three months, shower curtains. How Do you wash your shower curtain? We don't typically take ours down and wash it. I include some wipe downs of the shower curtain when I'm cleaning the bathroom, deep clean, but I don't throw them in the wash. Uh, throw blankets, throw rugs, outerwear, coats, jackets, that type of thing. And then every six months, pillows and comforters, and you can have those professionally cleaned. And several of these things that are on here, maybe things that you have to take to a professional cleaner to have done, but that's what they're saying is the frequency. Again, good housekeeping guidelines, not anything that uh, that you should take as being, you have to do it or else. And then there's some information here about the ways to do the laundry, about separating clothes. And, you know, we were raised, I know I was raised in doing laundry, separate the lights from the darks and, and you know, the colors, certain color clothing you want to keep away so that it doesn't bleed out and stuff. Don't overload machines. Uh, sanitize the washer regularly. And there's guidelines here for how you can clean out the inside of your washing machine. Why? Because bacteria and germs can gather there too. So there's some information here that you can pull up. And again, this is from Good Housekeeping. You can go to their website and probably find this. Selecting the correct water temperature and picking the perfect detergent. Certain detergents can be less effective in not only cleaning, but some of them, because of the chemicals that are in them, can actually cause reactions to the skin if, if the clothes weren't rinsed properly. And I've had that happen before. We've had to choose our detergents on the basis of not being an irritant in some way. So again, some good information about laundry. By the way, they also say, this is just sort of an aside, but how often when you're doing the laundry, there's that lint screen in the dryer. How often do you pull the lint screen out and, and get the lint off of it? The guidelines say, and this is both to for the efficiency of the dryer and for safety because you can get dryer fires. If, if the lint builds up and the heat gets too severe in there because it can't vent out, and you have an overload of heat, it, there are fire hazards if you're not cleaning the lint screen. They say after every single, or before every single, but between every single use of the dryer, clean the lint screen. And then actually you should have, you should eat the vent for the dryer, the, the, little, the little silver tube that you see there that goes to the wall. The inside of the dryer vent collects lint that gets past the lint screen and other detritus that gets in there. And you should have that either cleaned yourself or if you prefer professionally cleaned, they say twice a year. So about every six months, you should, you should clean that vent out to make sure it doesn't get clogged up and also create issues with efficiency or safety. How about some of the personal items that we use? How often should we clean or replace those? And I hit a few things here that I think will be interesting. One is the toothbrush. We use the toothbrush to clean our mouth, but do we clean the toothbrush? And the guidelines say do that weekly. And this is from experts who talk about how to maintain your personal items, both for, for longevity, but also for health. It's talking about soaking your toothbrush in, in an antibacterial, antibacterial mouthwash and then rinse it again. Um, you know, talk about how you can store it and, and for reuse. And again, our toothbrush can collect germs. We don't think about that. And I know it's kind of gross to think about that, but we need to make sure that the things we're putting in our mouth aren't going to contribute to the possibility of our health or the, the possibility of ill health. And then there are also, you can also purchase, um, and they talk about putting in the dishwasher, uh, hot cycle without soap. And then there are actually UV toothbrush sanitizers that, that use UV light to uh, kill germs. So that's a possibility if you want to invest in that. 
And then talk about replacing the toothbrush. This one got to me as well. Uh, they, I, I remember seeing a guideline, I think at one time it said about every six months or when the bristles start to show signs of, of being frayed, they're not standing up well anymore. Some of the guidelines say replace the toothbrush. And this also, I think, came from American Dental Association, but replace your toothbrush every three to four months or when bristles start to become frayed. So that's another thing is if you have kids, you're gonna to wanna to check their toothbrushes and make sure that they're not showing those signs of wear or make sure you're replacing those as, as they are needed. Hair brushes. Hair brushes can get a little bit yucky too as, as hair collects in them, but also remember that the things that are on your scalp start to get collected in with that hair and those can spread germs. I know some of this is gross, but hey, we're talking about our health. Talks about removing loose hair and you should do this every couple of weeks, they say. I don't do that. Now my hair's pretty short. So I, you know, it's mine doesn't collect as much hair, but maybe I should be doing this. Um, removing, removing the loose hair, make a cleaning solution. They give directions on doing that. You can find sources online that talk about different solutions you can put together to clean the hairbrush. And then remove the brushes and rinse them thoroughly and then and then Talk about additional scrubbing, pat dry or air dry, and you're done and ready to use the brush again. So some of this creates a lot of extra work, I'm aware. We're talking about a lot of things that are going to put extra steps in our lives, but we're all trying to take care of ourselves to be healthy and uh, also to make sure that the things that we do use last as long as they're supposed to. And then replacing the hair, but this is another one. I I, I have to admit, I struggle with this one. And I think it probably depends on you know, how long your hair is, how much the, the hair is being, uh, is affecting the brush itself. It says replace your hairbrush about every six months. But one of the things they talked about is different types of hairbrushes will ways. And you can kind of tell by the teeth or the bristles on the hairbrush, if they're starting to bend or they're starting to lose um, bristles or, or teeth in the hairbrush, probably time to replace it. So you just kind of keep an eye on that, right? I do. I, I don't replace my hairbrushes very often because you can see, I mean, they're not, I don't, sometimes I just finger brush my hair and I'm not replacing my fingers. Ladies, makeup brushes. They say that you should clean them every 10 days to two weeks. And there's some directions here about how you can go about cleaning them. And, um, and again, you can find this information online. If you're watching this video, you can freeze frame this if you want to read this in, in greater depth. But there are things that you can do to clean out and then effectively dry your makeup brushes. And then they say that you should replace the brushes. If, you, if you're washing them regularly, your makeup brushes can last one to three years. And again, you're going to look for signs of wear. You're going to look at, at how the bristles are holding up, et cetera. But those last a little bit longer than things like the hairbrush and the toothbrush. Makeup sponges should be cleaned after every use. And it talks here again about how you can effectively clean the makeup brush and then how you let it air dry. Um, and it's talking about gentle cleansers to clean out the makeup brush. And part of that is so the makeup residue that, that is in the brush doesn't in and of itself start to become gummy or collect germs and stuff, I guess. I'm, I don't use a makeup sponge. So ladies, you're going to know better about the reasons. And then replace that, that sponge about every one to three months, again, depending on the wear, depending on, on the condition of it. And then your makeup itself, how often should you replace makeup? Even if you haven't used it all up, they say that mascara, anything that you're putting around your eyes, you do not want to let it sit there and start to um, lose its consistency or start to collect germs that can cause eye infections, which can become issues in other areas too. So mascara, replace every three months. Eyeliner, replace every three to four months and clean the wand after every use. And, and there are no guidelines here for how to go about cleaning the wand, but you can find that information online. And then your lipstick and lip gloss, you know, I, if you're using that, ladies, I know that for you, you're using the lipstick and the lip gloss throughout the day at times. And so very often, I know in the case of Carol, uh, my wife and, and other uh, ladies I know, is that it's not unusual that they're going to use up the lipstick or the lip gloss before they would have to replace it. But if it's just sitting around, they say replace it about once a year. Replacing underwear. This is an interesting one, too. Um, 
again, it depends on the frequency of wear. It depends on the, the circumstances and how you wear your, your clothing and your underwear. In other words, are you putting more wear into them? But if you have enough pairs of, of underwear, maybe you're not, um, you know, you're not wearing a particular pair that often. But they say that depending on the frequency of wear, generally speaking, you should replace your, your underpants, men and women, and for women bras, every six to 12 months. Once again, judging on wear and replacing socks every three to six months. Let me stop there for a minute. And many of you know, I'm a sock guy. I, I wear socks that are kind of uh, colorful and the patterns are interesting, etc. And I have a, a decent number of socks. So I don't wear any one pair of socks that frequently, you know, where some people just have a set of, of enough crew socks to get through the week or dress socks to get through the week. They wear them once, they wash them, and then they're wearing them again in a few days. Those are the circumstances really where I think here they're talking about the, the more frequent replacement of socks. I replace socks when they start to get holes in them, frankly. You know, if they're either wearing through to where I can see my foot through the sock or I'm getting holes that cannot be easily mended, that's when I replace my socks. How often should you clean your house? This is another interesting topic because we all want to have a clean house. We want, don't, I don't like clutter and I don't like it when, you know, dirt is gathering in places. But here are the guidelines that uh, you can find online. And, and I'm going to be honest, say, I don't remember specifically the source that I found some of this information, but this is once again, general information just to share and you can find your own info online as well. They talk about the kitchen here and they say a light cleaning and a deep clean, um, a light daily cleaning and a deep clean every one to two weeks. Clean the dirty dishes and countertops daily. I mean, some of this is kind of common sense, um, but things like taking care of spills and, um, and that type of thing on a, a, a frequent basis after you have had food of different types on your counter, et cetera, you want to clean immediately and clean it effectively. And talk about the microwave here. Oh, they talk about wiping down your refrigerator from top to bottom. Um, and they talk about the inside of the fridge. I'll tell you the truth. I struggle with keeping up with that, not because of the necessity, but just because I don't think that through and I don't want to empty the entire fridge, you know, um, weekly and clean out the whole inside. I just don't do it. Now we did for a while, we were living in California. We had a house cleaning service that would come in once every two, I think either once every two weeks or once a month, it changed, we changed it a couple of times and they would do a lot of this deep cleaning stuff for us. And so it was just taken care of. That's the other reason that I sometimes get a little bit unmindful or lazy about it, but they talk about the refrigerator. They talk about the microwave, um, coffee makers, and there's more information online. They're mentioning like a Keurig type coffee maker, the pod type coffee maker. There are things that you can find online that also talk about coffee brewers and how you clean the inside of those brewers. And then they, the um, mopping the kitchen floors, etc. And folks, I'm just going to take a moment once again in the middle of this uh, video that we're showing and remind you to please hit the subscribe button and hit the like button, which helps us get this information out to even more people as it increases the visibility of the videos that we're putting on our channel. And I thank you for that. Cleaning the bathroom. The t this is another, I'm, I'm the primary bathroom cleaner in our household, and I take it very seriously. When I'm cleaning the bathroom, I, I try to scour and scrub as much as possible. But they talk about uh, bathroom sinks and counters should be cleaned once a week. Try to keep up with that. I try to keep up with it on a, on a regular basis. I can't guarantee you it's every single week. It depends on, on the bathroom frequency of use. And they talk about this a little bit too. Toilets get gross. Yes, they do. But also um, they talk about the hot, hard water buildup that gets in there. And so cleaning that and brushing that out and breaking down those hard water rings before they take hold and get actually into the, the material. Uh, bathtubs and bath mats can breed bacteria. And then they talk about that in mopping on a weekly basis. So once again, it's kind of keeping up with things as, as you go. Living rooms, family rooms, the gathering places for your family, and they talk about once a week dusting, vacuuming carpets and rugs, sweeping, mopping hard surface floors. Uh, you can use bathroom or vacuum attachments for the furniture you sit on to kind of get the, the surface 
dirt off. And then there are for certain fabrics or certain materials that cover your chairs and your couches, there are specifically uh, cleaners that you can get for those if you want to use them. And then it talks about steam cleaning carpets and rugs once every six months. You're going to have some experts and manufacturers tell you to use carpet shampoo and you're going to have others saying that can actually be detrimental. You need to research that on your own. I'm not, I'm not going to tell you what's appropriate, but they do talk about doing more of that deeper steam cleaning a couple of times a year. And then also with the living room, family room, or this could be in other rooms of your house, depending on remote controls. You know that when you go to a hotel, they've now talked about the fact that one of the biggest germ carriers in hotels are the TV remotes. Well, your TV remotes or your remotes for your other things at home, your electronics can also start carry germs and, and on the surface and stuff. So there's some instructions here about how to effectively and safely go about cleaning remote controls. And so, again, I'm not going to go through every single one of these bullet points, but you can pause the video if you want to take a closer look or do your own online research. There's plenty of resource out there for how to go about doing that, but we should do it. Home maintenance, home maintenance. This one was interesting to me. I'm not a tool guy. I'm not a guy who, who has ever been adept or comfortable doing a lot of the home maintenance things. I can do some of them, but it's not something that's top of mind for me or like I get a big enjoyment. Some people feel good about getting in there and putting on the tool belt and doing things or, or getting whatever appliances or, or things that they need. I'm going to be honest, say that's not me, but there are things here that are easy to do. And if you're not comfortable or physically capable of doing all of them yourself, there are resources available, people who can come in, you know, handyman services. And, and sometimes it's just a friend, a family member, a neighbor who might be available and willing to come and help you do some of these things. So this is things they talk about. And this is from Better Homes and Gardens. And Better Homes and Gardens says that monthly you should do things like clean the furnace filter to remove dust buildups. Um, and it can it can help with your energy bills. It, again, makes the, the furnace operate more efficiently. Check water softeners. Uh, if you have a, a, a water filter, water softening system that uses the salt pellets, you want to keep an eye on that on a monthly basis. Clean faucet aerators and shower heads to remove mineral deposits. Uh, I try to address looking at how those are working when I do my bathroom cleanup, but um, yeah, something to take a look at. Inspect tub and sink drains for debris on clog if necessary. Again, it's something I regularly do. Test the smoke alarms, carbon monoxide detectors, fire extinguishers, all ground fault circuit interrupters. Important for safety, right? And then also they talk about inspecting any electrical cords for wear. Make sure that they're not getting trapped under furniture or something that's starting to break through the, the insulation and create an issue that could be a hazard. Vacuum heat registers and heat vents. Check that indoor and outdoor air vents are not blocked. Flush out hot water from the water heater to remove accumulated sediment. Clean the garbage disposal by grinding ice cubes, then flushing with hot water and baking soda. Some things here I need to start doing that I haven't been. I don't know about you. And then there are some things here seasonally. Once again, I'm not going to go through every single one of these for every single season. I'm going to show them up here, give you an opportunity to look at them. But a lot of these are just the things that we need to check around our house and that different seasons make sense because they're going to help us in the current season and they're going to help us prepare for the season that's coming up. Um, for instance, on here, talk about inspecting the roof for damaged shingles and leaks. We get into the fall season starting to get more rain and we're working toward the winter season where you could get snow accumulation on the roof depending on where you live etc so i'm making sure your roof's in good shape before you get into those seasons is a smart idea as are the other things that uh, that are mentioned here and then also in the fall there's some additional things it was a long list fall is a preparatory for that harsh winter season so they talk about some other things that you can be doing here. And, and some of those kind of overlap. We talked about some of the monthly things like checking the, the um, make, testing the smoke detectors and the carbon monoxide detectors. Here they're talking about just go ahead, replace the batteries in all of them. Uh, and they talk about that, I think, doing that a couple of times a year. They typically have you talk about doing that so you remember at the point that we switch to standard time in the fall and the point that we switch to daylight savings time in the spring. So you're checking those a couple of times a year. Winter, 
covered the air conditioning unit. We had to do that for the first time living in Spokane. Uh, it was the first time that we had an air conditioning unit sitting outside the house that I recall that was the part of our, our setup. And I had to get a cover for the air conditioning unit and cover it for the summer or for the winter when we were turning it off to protect it from the weather. Check the basement for leaks during thaws, inspect roof gutters and downspouts for damage after storms. They talk about the things that, that we should be doing during the winter. You'll notice that more of these are checking based on conditions and not having you spend all your time outside in the cold winter temperatures. And then some things here in the spring that are, again, we're kind of getting out of the harsh weather potentially and getting into more moderate weather and moving towards summer. And so there's some things that you that are recommended to do here that are part of spring. Once again, I'm not going to go through every bullet point. You can pause the video if you need to spend more time reading this. Do your own online research. And it's just state again for the purpose of disclaimer. I'm not a professional. I'm not an expert where any of this comes in. I just found these things to be interesting to research and share. Summer, and they talk about things that are good to do during the summer months. Once again, a um, few items on the checklist, not as many as we as there were in the fall. And, and uh, fall was really the most, I think, in preparation for harsher weather. How often automobiles, this is another one. I've never been that great at, you know, I, I look at the owner's manual and that's really where you should start. Check your owner's manual. Do this. You can find information online specific to your vehicle or vehicles. And, uh, but there are some guidelines that the Kelly Blue Book people put out. And that's why I wanted to utilize theirs because it's very unbiased. And they just mentioned some things that you should do monthly. And uh, again, I'm not going to talk through every single bullet point here, but feel free to pause the video and take a more in-depth look at some of this information and or specifically do your own online research. Talk to your own. If you've got a good mechanic that you're already using, honest mechanic, um, I do. And I don't have any problem seeking them for information and confirming things about the specific things going on with my car. The owner's manuals only go so far. And you may be encountering specific needs or issues with your vehicles that need to be addressed with a professional. And then this talks about something, what you should be doing every three months. We started with monthly, every three months, talk about what should be checked and or replaced if necessary. Six month checkup and talking about rotating the tires and, and wax the vehicle. You know, it's, it's interesting because some of this stuff is based on the frequency, how many times a year. Some things are based on the mileage of the car itself. And sometimes it's an either or depending on how much you drive your car, depending on how much, how much wear you're putting on it um, could indicate that some of the things need to be done more frequently than every so many months, or they may be less frequent for you because the need isn't there for some of these things. But you want to make sure you're paying attention to your car's needs and talking to the right people about it. What do you need to do every six months? And then what should be looked at on an annual basis is also listed here by the Kelly Blue Book people. Every two years, they talk about certain things that need to be done. And it's, it's again, going to be a, a, a how often or how many miles when it comes to vehicles. Our bodies are kind of the same way. Kind of feel like certain things that I do to take care of myself depend on the mileage I'm putting on my body, how active I am. And then long term, this is, you know, as we're keeping our cars in many cases longer, it used to be you keep your car for, and some people still do this, particularly if they're leasing a vehicle, they may keep a car for two or three years and then they trade it for the next car. But anymore, a lot of our cars we're keeping for many, many years and putting well over 100,000 miles on them, sometimes well over 200,000 miles on them. And so there are things that we need to consider for long term. By the way, you'll notice that much of this is based on um, cars that, that operate off of gasoline or diesel. They're not talking about electric cars here and possibly not even hybrid. I'm just going to put that disclaimer. I'm not an expert on any of that. So there may be things that are much, much different if you have an electric vehicle than what's being mentioned here. Once again, you got to check your resources, talk to your experts about it. And as we come down to the conclusion of sharing this once more, I'm going to just mention this fact, this disclaimer that, that's been running at the bottom of the screen as well. I am not um, an expert. I'm not a professional. I'm a consumer 
and a person who just lives day to day and uses a lot of these products and, and tries to take care of myself and my family in the same way that I think you do. And so just sharing information that I found interesting, helpful and useful. And I, and I hope that uh, that's how you're taking it. And finally, just want to thank you once again for taking the time to tune in, taking the time to share information with me. And I encourage you strongly to hit the subscribe button and to hit the like button and follow what's going on on Coffee Breaks with Steve on a regular basis. We do live stream episodes on Saturdays at 9.30 a.m. Pacific time. You can adjust that for your time zone. But I'm putting the links to our Facebook and YouTube and podcast sites in the description below here so that you can go and find those. And I hope that you'll be a part of the Coffee Breaks family and hopefully each Saturday, you'll put on the brakes, grab a cup of coffee, and join the conversation as we share different topics and different guests. Thanks for being here. I hope you enjoyed this video.